Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we will be looking at the proof of the theorem which is uh, which tell us about the spectral representation of a self-adjoint bounded linear operator. Right? So, uh, we already discussed about this theorem where T was given to be the bounded self-adjoint linear operator on a complex Hilbert space. Then, uh, it would have spectral representation of this kind that we have already discussed and moreover, where this E lambda that represents the spectral family which is associated with the given operator. Right? And uh, for uh, in terms of uh, inner product, this representation is regarded by this equation 2 right and moreover if we have certain polynomial so we can write uh, that polynomial in terms of operator polynomial right so for these two uh, how we can represent the spectral representation so p of t in that case would be represented by this kind of integral and the corresponding uh, in uh, this inner product integral that is represented by this kind right so in this uh, video we will be going to first of all prove part a so we will be proving this thing so let's move ahead and see what uh, do we require to prove in order to prove this spectral representation so we wanted to prove this spectral representation right so for that what we are going to do we are going to construct a sequence of partitions right what is a partition uh, something which is connected uh, side by side right that is a partition and that uh, when you add up all of them they make up the whole of the complete thing right uh, so in this case we'll be breaking a interval an interval right uh, let me uh, i'll show you how we'll be doing that okay so first of all we'll be constructing a sequence of partitions and then for those partitions, we will prove that the sum of the sequence that converges to this operator t when we make those intervals very small, right? So, in that case, when we make the intervals very small, this sum would become the integration. This is the idea. And uh, in that case, we will be saying that the norm between t and that sequence is very less and it is less than epsilon right where what is epsilon it is some positive very small quantity so this is the idea okay so now moving on to the proof what do we do we first of all choose a sequence of partitions we call it by p n right so this n is the index here for the this partition what uh, what uh, of what thing does this partition form we are breaking down this interval here this interval which is open from the left hand side and closed from the right hand side a b so here this a is some quantity which is less than this volume and b is some quantity some number which is greater than this capital m and what are these small n m capital m these are uh, the intervals on which we uh, we have defined the spectral family right so for this particular uh, interval here we, of we are breaking it down into smaller parts we are calling that parts to be p n right uh, and we are constructing a sequence regarding to that and we are calling this to be p n right and uh, the corresponding smaller intervals they are represented by this delta n j where we are f uh, for a particular n we are fixing some particular n and then uh, defining this index j which varies from 1 to n and it is uh, by uh, by naming purpose we are calling this interval to be the interval lambda nj and mu nj right closed from the right open from the left right so what is the length of this interval it is simple it is mu nj minus lambda nj so we are writing the length by l delta nj this is this one and here what is this quantity this is the next uh, uh, next whatever is uh, there lambda 
for example if i have this line if i i have a here i have b here so i'm calling this to be lambda n0 the next entry would be lambda n1 so this lambda n1 would be your mu n0 right and similarly this would be a lambda n2 this would be mu n1 and so on so this is this would be your first interval this would be your second interval and so on we are dividing the intervals like this okay so here uh, this uh, length is represented by this and uh, this i have told you what does this mean and what is the size of such partitions so we are saying uh, we assume the sequence pn such that we have eta pn as the maximum of the length and we are saying this length the maximum of this length is going to zero that means the length is very small whenever we are tending this n towards infinity so that means we are whenever we are making a large number of partitions the corresponding length is going to be smaller and smaller right this eta represents the length of the largest interval so uh, this is the construction move uh, moving on to from this construction on to the proof we uh, remember we have studied about this inequality in the proof of the previous theorem so in uh, using this inequality here and replacing this delta here by delta nj we have this inequality that simple and in place of lambda nj in place of lambda we are writing lambda nj in place of mu we, we are writing mu nj right so this is the inequality now in this inequality what we are doing we are taking summation take uh, over j where this j varies from 1 to n and this thing is performed for every n so what do we have here we have summation in front of all of the three terms and let's mark this by equation number 6 here now because we know this mu nj that is equal to lambda nj plus 1 because of the nomenclature and uh, construction that we have defined here right so using this thing here and moreover we also know from the previous theorem that whenever lambda is less than m we have e lambda as equal to the zero operator and whenever lambda is greater than equal to m we have e lambda as equal to the identity operator so therefore in this case uh, we have t summation so what does this thing become t of summation e delta nj so you could write this e delta nj as e mu minus e lambda nj this is according to the definition of e delta which we have defined previously it was e mu minus e lambda right so using this thing here in terms of nj it is this and moreover because uh, our mu and lambda they are defined for the interval a and b where this a is less than m and this b is greater than equal to capital m so therefore for the purposes this would become identity this would become zero right so finally we have here t so equation number 5 which was uh, this equation which tells us about the maximum length of the interval right so this equation here implies that for every epsilon greater than 0 there is some small n such that uh, this length of the partition is less than epsilon whenever we take for every epsilon there is some uh, n there would be some n such that this length would be less than this so that means uh, at certain number 1 2 3 4 5 6 we keep on counting like this so we reach at some n here some number here such that after that number the length is going to be lesser than this epsilon this is what this means so here uh, this is one thing and moreover from equation 6 what do we have this was our equation 6 from this equation let's see we have summation mu nj e delta nj minus summation lambda nj e delta nj what does this imply uh, you can uh, club up the terms and then you have this term right and then you can expand up this term into this one right simple by definition it is like this then uh, as we have seen here this thing becomes identity and this becomes the zero operator so therefore in this case also this becomes identity and this becomes zero operator so that and moreover this length this represents the length of the interval 
so we have uh, as i've told you this length is always going to be less than epsilon mm, we have just talked about this here right what does this signify this is the length of the some partition so obviously this thing has to be less than epsilon and if this is less than epsilon you have all of the thing less than epsilon and this thing corresponds to identity over here so basically you have uh, this difference here less than epsilon identity that is what we have written as equation number 7 so now from equation 6 and from equation 7 this is your equation 7 and from equation 6 this is our equation 6 you see what do we have with us this thing is less than epsilon identity right Th that is what we are saying no not not this we are saying the difference is less than epsilon identity right so let's see what do we have here for given epsilon greater than 0 there is some capital N such that whenever we have some number which is greater than this capital N and for every choice of lambda cap nj we have t minus this thing less than epsilon right so that means they are saying you choose some lambda from the interval right from any of the interval such uh, such that after this number capital n you may choose any del uh, any lambda right uh, for a given epsilon we have this uh, norm less than epsilon right so from here uh, we have this inequality and this inequality basically tell you that whenever you tend this n towards infinity we are taking the large values of n in that case uh, this uh, epsilon obviously that is a very small quantity the difference is very small and the summation would tend towards inf uh, integration and finally you have uh, the first result that you wanted to prove for this particular theorem so you have this thing and here obviously uh, the intervals uh, they are a to b right so uh, the values which are after m so basically you have a bigger interval a and b here right in between there is some m and there is some capital n so whatever is the value be before this small m and after this capital m they are meaningless right because there uh, we do not uh, it doesn't make any sense why because there the value of e that is constant quantity so that is what i uh, we have written over here just a second yes so uh, whenever you have lambda less than m or lambda greater than or equal to capital m then this e lambda is a constant if that is so so that means whenever you have a less than small m or b greater than m then the values of this e lambda they are immaterial so basically this summation where we are we have defined this interval would tend towards this interval only because whatever is the value outside this interval that is meaningless right so now this uh, gives you the first result this proves result number one with equation eight this equation that sh uh, shows that the integral here is to be understood in terms of uniform operator convergence one thing another thing if we uh, this equation here this equation eight this implies that this equation implies strong operator convergence so just go back and see what is the definition of strong operator convergence if you do not remember this thing uh, so this equation implies we have a strong operator convergence if that is there the inner product has to be continuous and if that is so the sum in equation 8 that is of this status type right so therefore the result 1 would imply result 2 for every choice of x and y taken from the given complex Hilbert space so this is what uh, was there in your part a where we wanted to prove this equation 
right this is a consequence of this equation as i have told you just now because we have a strong operator convergence and moreover the inner product is a continuous one so this is the proof for the for, uh, for part a i hope you understood this one well that is it for this video thank you for watching